<laughs> Just going to give a few announcements. All right. Next Sunday, oh, uh, uh, Jack and I will be in North Carolina. We're ministering in North Carolina at Southport, North Carolina, Friday and Saturday. So John's coming in and he's going to be doing the service for us. All right. So I know you guys love it. <laughs> I know. He's fun. He's so funny. Huh? Isn't he a riot? <laughs> oh, when he was talking about the cruise, we're doing a cruise together. And I had to really twist his arm to do this cruise because he's never been on a cruise ship before. <laughs> so he's up here last week telling about putting on his floaties and his, his, <laughs> he's going to have a life jacket. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he did it. <laughs> he's, he's so funny. So, uh, but that's coming also. That is going to be November um, uh, 3rd through the 9th, okay? It's going to be the cruise. So anybody that wants to go on the cruise, I would suggest you sign up because they're almost full. Oh, and it's with Heavenly Cruises. So just go to our website, donnarigney.org, okay? And all the information is there. And then you just click on the cruise on the events page. You click on the cruise. And then it'll take you to their website. And that's how you can sign up for that. Okay. And um, I think that's it. Just the, the only uh, reminder is April 14th on the Sunday, we won't be here. We're going to be here April 12th on the Friday because they already had this, uh, the, the post reserved for somebody else on the 14th. So it's going to be April 12th on the Friday night. We'll be here, but not on the Sunday, on the Friday. Same time. Same time, okay? Five o'clock to 10, all right? Okay, now I'm just going to share just really quickly. If anybody's interested, I have two prophetic books. You can find them on my website, DonnaRigney.org. When you get them, they'll be autographed. I autograph all the books before we send them out. Okay, and um, the first one I wrote was Divine Encounters, and that was where the Lord brought me to hell, and he brought me to heaven many times and taught me many things and had me write down everything I was seeing it's in detail. Details in hell, details in heaven. And then he continued bringing me to heaven, and so this is a like a sequel, The Glory of God Revealed, where he brought me to a special place in heaven of this beautiful golden mountain. Anyone who's a glory seeker on the earth, when we die, it's a special place that glory seekers get to visit in heaven, okay? So all you guys are glory seekers. It's magnificent. The whole mountain is gold and everything grow, grows in this gold, so it's enormous. And the gold represents the glory. So it's a beautiful, beautiful place. And so I've gone to many visits there and this also tells you what's going to happen in the future when the glory is poured out. And we're stepping into it now. We're beginning to see it. And then I have a three CD soaking in the glory uh, set, audio set. If anyone wants to know more about the glory, how to encounter the glory, oh, how to really soak. What I've learned is that if you soak, spend time with God in the glory every day, oh, you kind of get to be like me. <laughs> <laughs> the glory's on me all the time, and it's wonderful. I'm not complaining. <laughs> I might look a little weird, but it's wonderful. It's just that you feel like the love of God is constantly being poured out on you, and there's this joy that just bubbles up in you, and it's it's just constant. No matter what's going on, you just feel this love and this joy. <laughs> Last night, we had a birthday party we went to. <laughs> we had a party there. It's a Love of God just poured out on us. The glory was wonderful. God is good. So if you want any of these, uh, you'll find them on our website, DonnaRigney.org. All right, now I'm going to share uh, with you what the Lord uh, spoke to me about this week. Father, I just pray that you would anoint this word, uh, that you would touch our hearts, ho ha, ho ha, and that you would build our faith as we hear this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Okay, I'm going to... Oh, 
let me just start now with this okay <laughs> he um last week i i know i told you that god told me and he keeps reminding me this week everything is made easy in the glory all right so we need the glory of god the glory of god is the presence of god oh when he he was teaching me about the glory i've told you this before that he said to me can you go to the star and leave your humanity behind i'm like no wherever i go i have to take my humanity with me he said the same is true of my glory i can't separate myself from my glory it's who i am oh ha. so when you encounter the glory it's not just like some shiny light pouring off of god it's his very presence it's his essence it's who he is oh it says in scripture that jesus is the glory of the father oh so you're receiving the wonderful outpouring of the presence of god when you receive the glory okay <laughs> and he said everything everything is made easy in the glory so the more we have of his glory the easier our life is going to be the more enjoyable our life is going to be the more he's going to be able to undertake for us the more he'll remove obstacles out of the way the more he'll be able to defend us protect us vindicate us as need be oh ha. reward us okay all these things come as a result of the glory so i just wanted to remind you of that all right now this is what um he spoke to me um, about this going on in the world now he said many more changes are coming into your lives into this world and they will all be good okay so he's saying this is the time where the winds of change are going to blow many more changes are coming um, in the world and they're going to come into our lives individually and they're going to be changes for good can we let our faith arise in that word that god has for us that the changes that are coming are going to be good oh sometimes we don't like change because we think change is going to be bad it's not change is going to be good okay <laughs> he said our plans are to, to do our beloved children great good Place your trust in us and you will see everything we planned come to pass. That's the key, that we need to place our trust in him. He says, if you place your trust in me, not in yourself, not in the people around you, not in the government, huh? not in your leaders, place your trust, your confidence in me. Oh, and you'll have peace. You'll see those things that I want to have happen, happen. Because that's we're like a little child and we put our hand in God's hand. He's like, come on, I'll lead you. I'll take care of you. I'll bless you. But there's that level of trust in him that he wants us to have. Okay? So, again, I'm going to say, oh, place your trust in us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and you will see everything we planned come to pass. All right? That's the key to God's will being done in our lives as it is in heaven here on earth declare what we say and stand firm on it don't waver with unbelief okay we will lead you step by step you will not run ahead or lag behind but you will be in sync with us and with our timing no man will interfere with our plans as long as your trust remains in us so he kept repeating that over and over that, that, that we need to have trust in him. And I'm just going to read this scripture, which I shared it last week, but he's, he wants us to, oh, um, wait a minute, right here. That's Jeremiah 29, starting in verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Does God have plans for us? Yes, yes. I know the plans I have for you. He has plans for our nation, but he has plans for us individually. Amen. Okay? He's got a plan for your life. And what he wants us to do is link up with him so the plan he has for us can come to pass. Yes. And how do we link up with him? By trusting him. Okay? He said, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good. They are plans for good. And not for disaster ho oh, ha to give you a future and a hope does god want you to have a future yes jesus 
came to give us life, life to the fullest. He wants us to have a full, happy, bright future. All right? <laughs> oh, boy. It's hard for me to stand up here tonight. My whole body's trembling under the glory. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> in those days when you pray <laughs> and what days the days when we place our trust in him okay in those days when you pray i will listen we heard so many testimonies tonight of prayers that people prayed oh that happened that prayers got answered right away okay <laughs> bruce's wonderful testimony about his shoulder being healed and, and god just took care of him okay <laughs> Oh, if you look for me in earnest, you will find me when you seek me. Don't we want more of him? Huh? He says, in this time, when you look for me in earnest, okay? You know, we can be like, well, God, I'll pray on my way to work or my way to the store, you know, but no, we really need to set time aside. Seek him in earnest. I'm shutting everything else off shutting off my phone, getting rid of the computer out of the room, just me and you, God, putting in the worship music, seeking him in earnest, expecting that we're going to hear from him. He says, when you do that, you're going to find me. I will meet with you. <laughs> okay? He says, <laughs> if you look for me in earnest, you will find me when you seek me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. So God wants us to know that when we seek him, He's going to be right there for us. And then he said, life has many twists and turns and ups and downs. Can we all say, yeah, yes. yeah, huh? huh? Yeah. Many twists and turns, ups and downs. So oh, as we go through life, whoa. And he said, if you stay very close to us, you will easily navigate them. So he said, stay close to father. Stay close to me, stay close to Holy Spirit, and you will easily navigate the twists and the turns, the ups and the downs of life. I'll carry you through the rough times. I'll be right there beside you, no matter if things are good or bad. Okay? <laughs> he said, no harm will be for you or yours as you surrender all to us. So he's saying, even your loved ones, as you surrender everything to me, everything, your whole life, everything that concerns you, your problems. I, I, when I found out that we could give years ago, I found out we could give God our problems. I thought we only had to give him the good stuff, but we can give him everything, okay? Even our weaknesses, the things we don't like about ourselves. Huh? We all have some of those things. Huh? He says, as you surrender all to me, huh? I'll take care of it. I'll take care of you. Oh, no harm will befall you if you belong completely to me. Okay? We've got to give him our whole life. This is what he's saying. I, I want you to be completely surrendered to me. Give me a worry about your finances. Give me the things in your life, the issues with relationships, oh, that are really difficult and trying in your life. Give me those things. Give me everything. And I will surround you, protect you, and no harm will befall you. Oh, because you are totally his. And when you're totally his, he has the right to protect you. Okay? Oh. <laughs> to place your total trust in us and for all you for all you and they need, your loved ones, is the way we would have you live your life your daily lives, okay? So he's saying, don't just trust me for yourself, but trust me for your loved ones too. And isn't that sometimes the hardest thing that we have is issues we have with our loved ones that we're worried about them, we're fearful of them, we're concerned about them. He said, give me them. Trust me to take care of them. Trust me with your rebellious kids. You know, years ago, I was afraid to give some of the rebellious kids. We raised a lot of kids, and some of them were rebellious. I, I was like, oh, I don't want to give them to God. What will he do to them? Because I, <laughs> I knew what they were doing. <laughs> well, 
I didn't know God so well back then. <laughs> I'm like, woo. <laughs> I don't know if anybody ever thought that before, but I thought that. <laughs> no, he's saying, give them to me. I love them more than you do. My mercy is huge. My grace is enormous. Trust me with them. Give me your most rebellious, difficult, obstinate loved ones you care deeply about, but that want nothing to do with me. He said, give them to me. Give them to me. Surrender them to me. Okay? <laughs> and then he said, let no fear worry or anxiety come near you to pull you away from us and to rob you of your peace of mind so he's saying don't let any not a speck of fear anxiety worry pull you away from god that place of trusting god and i i just think that's the biggest thing we've been battling over the last few years i remember when when god brought me in the spirit who to this beautiful ballroom in heaven at the very, very beginning of COVID, back in the beginning of 2020. And while we were there, and I saw this wonderful celebration going on in this ballroom, uh, Jesus told me, he said, look down, look. And I looked down to the earth and I saw demons and they were stoking a fire. It looked like a campfire. And they were making this campfire blaze, stoking it with these long pitchforks, putting more wood on it. And he said to me, he said, the enemy is going to be stoking the fire of fear and trying to put fear out all over the world. He said, but it's going to backfire. He said, because what it's going to do is it's going to cause people to come running to me that never would have had anything to do with me. And we saw that happen. This is the place we've been in. So I don't know about you, but I think a majority of people have been battling with fear. Because this is just coals of fear have been released all over the world. Oh, the, and that was the enemy's ploy, was to put great fear in the people. Oh, but what it has done is the majority of people have run to God in, with that fear. So afraid. The government didn't have the answers. The doctors didn't have the answers. We're running to God for the help that we needed. So God's saying, be alert and understand that the enemy has been putting fear out on you. I want you to know that this has been kind of clinging on you. Don't let it near you. How do you guard yourself? Guard your mind. Don't think fearful thoughts. Don't get into the, what if this happens? What if that happens? Okay? <laughs> Don't let fear near you. Fear for your loved ones. Fear for your health. Fear for your finances. Fear for what's going to happen next in the nation. Okay? Fear for the elections. Fear that they're going to be corrupted. We can let all those fears so oh, come upon us. And that in the book of Job, it says, that which I feared came upon me. It's a big open door for the very thing we fear. We're opening the door for the enemy to bring that thing into our lives. That which we fear can, can come upon us. So we got to, he's saying, guard yourself. Don't let fear rob you of your peace of mind. He said, picture us undertaking for you and rescuing yours and your nation. Actually, picture it. I was praying with someone uh, the other night who's going to be undergoing surgery this week. And as I was praying for this person, I saw them healed and happy and dancing and, and just totally fine. And, and God's saying, this is what I want you to do about those things where fear is kind of coming in and into your lives, okay? Picture us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, undertaking for you and rescuing yours and rescuing your nation. Picture us doing that. Fuel faith, dash fear, okay? Uh, picture finances coming back to you. Picture justice coming, okay? Picture loved ones running into Jesus's arms, before they do it, Amen. picture it, see it, and that, that builds up your faith. See your loved ones all running to Jesus, serving him. See your loved ones that have been battling with addictions and other issues free. See it. Is that God's will? 100% it's his will. Oh, see it, and that will build your faith so while you're praying, God can perform it.
okay? So he's saying, picture us undertaking for you and rescuing yours in your nation. Fuel faith, even with your thoughts and aspirations. Think, you know, Philippians 4, 8. Think on those things that are good, pure, lovely, admirable, okay? Don't think about what the enemy might do. We hear a lot of might do's on the news, okay? <laughs> and with people around us. Don't visualize the negative stuff, all right? Visualize the positive. Visualize the rescue. Visualize the healing, okay? To be ours is all that is necessary. He said to be ours is all that is necessary, okay? Oh, live for us. Walk in the shadow of my son. Be led by my Holy Spirit. Do only those things we ask of you. Spend quality time getting to know us and our ways. He's saying that's how you live a surrendered life. That's how you live for us. Okay? <sighs> and <laughs> then the Lord brought me in the spirit today. And I, I'm going to share this encounter I had because it goes. He's kind of was like talking to me day after day about this. Building our faith. Getting rid of fear. OK, I believe that we are living in an hour similar to when the Israelites were rescued out of Egypt. That this is a time we've been crying out and crying out to God. Oh, he's heard our cries. Oh, just as the Israelites were crying out for years for God to rescue them from the slavery they were in. It says he heard their cries and he raised up Moses and sent Moses, sent a deliverer in to set them free, to get them out. So after the 10 plagues, they got set free. And, and he was leading them, Moses was leading them to their promised land where God had promised them a special land for them, land flowing with milk and honey, a beautiful place. But because of their unbelief, their lack of faith, which was fueled by complaining, murmuring, just constantly focusing on what was negative. Oh, ha. what they lacked, what they didn't have, oh, what they wanted. They, all that contributed to their faith being diminished. So when it came to entering into the promised land, they couldn't get in. God wouldn't allow them. There were giants in the land. They got all afraid. We can't get in there. And I feel like God's saying, in this hour, it is imperative that you build your faith because I have great, great, wonderful blessings for you. Oh, I have so much good in store for you. I don't want you to miss one tiny speck of it. Oh, I don't want you to miss a healing. I don't want you to miss a financial blessing. I don't want you to miss your loved ones being restored to you and restored to me. I don't want you to miss one speck. If you have unbelief and you haven't surrendered yourself to me completely, oh, ha, ha, then that's going to limit me from giving you what I want to give you. You receive what you believe. When Jesus was ministering to the blind man, he said to him, receive what you believe. Oh, ho, ho, ha. And he's saying that to us in this hour. Receive what you believe. Do you believe that God's going to restore righteous rulers to the land? Yes. Do you believe Donald Trump will get back in no matter what the enemy, huh? No matter what the enemy tries to do, Donald Trump will get back in because God wants that. Do you believe it? Yes. Ho, oh, ha. Do you believe that the corrupt Elections are going to stop. Yes. And with, yes. yeah, these are the things God's saying. Do you believe it? Yes. Receive it. Receive it. Do you believe that the wealth of the wicked? Yes. Is... <laughs> you got it. Huh? The wealth of the wicked is going to be poured out on the just. Huh? Oh. <laughs> She's going to get a lot. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so what God wants us to do in this hour is guard the faith you have. 
Don't let the enemy steal the faith you have and build it. Build it. Oh, let that faith increase. Huh? Let it increase. So I was in the spirit today praying, uh, spending time with the Lord, and I saw this staircase before me. And it was not like anything I'd ever seen before. It was a, a winding staircase um, with nothing around the sides of it. There was no guardrail, nothing. And so Jesus started walking up. He said, follow me. And then he started walking up this staircase that was going around like a spiral staircase going around and getting tighter and tighter as it went up. And as I, as I climbed up behind him, the, the staircase, the stair tread was getting narrower and narrower. And so Jesus said, come on, come right up here beside me. Come up. And, and he brought, took his arm out like this and held me close to his side. And together we walked up the rest of the staircase, uh, like him holding me close like that. And as we got to the very top, I saw who oh, at the top, the summit, it was in the spirit, it was like in the clouds. I saw the church, the new church, the new building. Yeah, I'm like, oh my goodness. Oh, <laughs> and, and then he, and this is what he said to me. Oh, now I want, that's what I saw because that's what God's assigned us to do. We all are climbing this staircase in the spirit. And what God has for you is at the top of that staircase. Okay? You know what he's given you as a promise, as a desire, as a call. Okay? That's at the top of that staircase. All right? <laughs> this is what he said. Stay close to me as you walk, walk on this journey of faith. We're on a journey of faith. Okay, <laughs> to get what's in the spirit and bring it down here into the natural realm. Okay, so <laughs> we're on a journey. He says, stay close to me. Like I was behind him, but I was kind of getting scared behind him that I was going to fall off because it was nothing to hold on to. It was getting narrower and narrower. And I, when I came up close to him, ah, I wasn't at all afraid. It was great. <laughs> so he said, stay close to me as you walk on this journey of faith to complete your assignment to build for me to build a glory revival center. Know this today. I am showing you the truth. He said, this building is already built in the spirit realm. Whatever God's calling you to do is already built. It's already there in the spirit realm. If he's calling you to a healing ministry, it's done. It's up there built in the spirit realm. Huh? Whatever he's calling you to do, Whatever, whatever it is God wants of you, it's already established and built. All right? Oh, amen. Oh. And then he said, together oh, with us, you and yours have already laid the foundation and built the structure on it with your faithful, devoted service to us and to ours. He's saying, you have already built the foundation for what it is I have for you to do. You've already built the foundation. And when he said that, I remembered how, uh, I think it was two weeks ago, we had a meeting at our home on Saturday, um, <laughs> to a training class on preaching and whatnot. And at that meeting, we, we made a consecration that we were going to be those kind of leaders that would lay our lives down for Jesus, that would care about his people and not be selfish or prideful. We just made a lot of those declarations. At the end of it, the Lord told me, he said, today, the foundation for the work was laid. That, that the foundation is on the consecration of the people that were there saying, yes, I will do what you want me to do. I will follow you. I will do it your way. I'll be humble. I'll reach out and help the people. The foundation for that work for that church has already been laid. And God's saying to you, whatever he's given you to do, you've already laid the foundation for it. Okay? Whatever it is, you've already been diligently praying for people. If it's for operating and flowing in the gift of healing, if it's for a, a preaching or teaching ministry, whatever it is, reaching out to the poor, going to nursing homes, 
Whatever it is that God's called you to do, you've already laid the foundation for it, God's saying. What the, the, the call on your life, you've laid the foundation. Oh. It is just a small batter to bring it forth from the spirit realm to the natural. Because the foundation's already laid and the structure is it's built on, okay, with faithful, devoted service to us and to ours. He said, because of that, it's just a small matter to bring it from the spirit realm to the natural. Now, I'm seeing this thing up there on the clouds, a spiritual edifice, big, enormous. He said, it's just a small matter because you already laid the foundation with devoted service huh, and love for us. It's a small matter to bring that from the spirit realm down to the natural. The hard labor has been done. You've already done the hard labor for the life that God has for the, whatever the calling is. You've done the hard labor. I knew when he was telling me this, this wasn't just for us, for the church, but it was for all of us. But whatever the call is on our lives, we need faith. We need to be nestled in close to him. We need to have our trust in him. He said, the hard labor has been done. Continue to walk in faith one step at a time with us. Going up the steps, okay? Remain tucked in close to me and I will sustain and protect you. So all that I was doing in this walking up this spiral staircase, he's saying, that's what I want my bride to do. I want you to stay in close with me. Stay in nestled in under my arm. Oh, huh. And I will protect you. Psalm 91, huh? Those who abide, huh? In the presence of God, huh? In the shelter of his wing. All those wonderful promises. He says, stay close to me as you ascend this mountain of faith. Oh, he said, we will provide all you need <laughs> to birth it from the spirit to the natural realm. God's saying, stay close to me. We will give you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we will give you everything you need to birth that which is in the spirit realm and bring it down to the earth. All the things we prayed for tonight, none of them have manifested down here in the natural realm. We pray for Donald Trump to get back in. He's not back in. Is he going to be? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. We prayed for justice to come through the courts, huh? We prayed for just rulers to be put in their positions. We prayed for abortion to be abolished. We prayed for a lot of things that are in the spirit realm. And God says it's not hard for that which was in the spirit to come and be birthed into the natural. You already did the hard work. You prayed the prayers. You diligently served me. Now watch as those things come from the spirit down to the natural. Oh. <laughs> oh. Then he said, stagnant faith won't bring it forth. Okay? St you know, stagnant water, it doesn't move. It gets yucky. Huh? That's a little gross. All right? Right. <laughs> he said, stagnant faith. It's not moving. It doesn't accomplish anything. It's just there. Okay? He said, that won't bring it forth. But a lively, holy faith will, coupled with a great love for us. So this is what's going to bring forth from the Spirit that which God has called us all to do in our lives personally. Okay? And those prayers, those things we're praying for, for the nation and for others. Praying for healing for other people. These things are there, ready to be pulled down to the earth. These are the things that it's going to bring them forth, okay? A lively faith coupled with a great love for us. So he's saying, I want to see faith coupled with, aligned with a great love for Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, okay? And for our people. So we're going to have love even for our enemies, praying for our enemies, yep. Praying for them to repent. Praying for their hearts to be changed. Praying for their souls. Okay? So, a lively faith coupled with a great love for us and our people and a walk of obedience that is motivated by this great devoted love. God's saying, I need those. If you want to see that which is in heaven 
that's yours, that you've labored for, that you have deep in your heart a desire for something God's called you to do. There's some authors in here that have books that need to be published. Oh, he said, these things will come forth as you have a holy, lively faith, a love for me and a love for my people. Huh? <laughs> and you walk a walk of obedience because you love me. We're not being obedient to God because we want something from him. We're just being obedient because we love him. Whatever you want me to do, Lord, wherever you want me to go, whatever prayers you want me to pray, whatever things you need me to do, I'll do it because I love you. Just because I love you. Oh, oh, oh. He said, that's what's going to bring that which is in heaven down to. Can we do that? Yes. Yes. Oh, and he said, let your faith arise. Okay. Let, I was walking up this mountain of faith. Okay. Oh, I knew it was. Oh. Oh. Okay, let me just finish this. <laughs> and then he said, this is what is required of the humble, hungry ones who honor us with sincere worship and who house our glory to birth what seems impossible from the spirit to the earth. Okay, so humble, hungry people who honor God with sincere worship. He said, this is what's required of you, is to love him, have a lively faith, huh? obey him because you love him. He said, then you're going to see those things that seem impossible to get from heaven to the earth. Sometimes this does seem impossible that we're going to have just leaders back in positions of authority in our land. If you watch the news, the negative news, it it looks like it's a... It'll never happen. But we're not going to watch that. We're going to fuel faith. We're going to see, picture, picture in your mind's eye, the positive things that you're praying. See it done as you're praying it. See someone that's sick, healed, and whole. See the cancers leaving their bodies. Huh? See it. And build your faith. Oh, ha, ha. See the finances come forth. Those of us that need finances, See them come flying down from heaven and come down into our bank accounts so we can do the work of God as we need to do. Okay, so we aren't the, lend, the borrowers, but we are the lenders. So we are the head and not the tail. All right? All these ingredients are found in those we have assembled together in this hour. God's saying, all that's needed <laughs> for that which I want to do here on this. This is God's will. What we're seeing up there in heaven is God's will, his perfect will for your life, his plan. He said, all that you're seeing is my will. And I'm showing you, this is what I'm going to pour out on the earth. If I have a people that love me, that have a lively faith and love their brothers and sisters and who obey me, does God have that people? Yes, he does. He said, these are those people that are assembled about you. Oh, ha, ha. that which I want to do will be accomplished in their lives. Huh? Oh, ha, ha. in your lives. Let's just take one second, one second. Father, I thank you. Wherever our faith is weak, we ask that you strengthen our faith. Wherever our love is lacking towards you or towards any of your children, even our enemies, Give us the love that we need. Oh, where we resist you and don't want to do things you ask us to do. Give us the grace to obey you no matter what. No matter what the cost. Whatever you ask us to do, we want to do it. But we can only do it by your grace. I pray you give us the grace right now to have that lively faith, that obedient heart, and that heart filled with love for you and love for your people. We want your will that is in heaven to come down to the earth. Let your will be done, Jesus taught us to pray. Oh, as it is in heaven, let it be done here on earth. Oh, oh, let those blessings that are stored up in heaven come down to the earth in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's take communion. 
Father, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we love you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord God. Thank you. Jesus, we take this bread tonight representing your body. With great faith, we believe that as we take this bread right now, we're taking the body of Jesus into us. We believe, Lord, and we receive the benefits of the body of Jesus as we take communion tonight. We receive greater faith. We receive a, a heart that beats and pants and yearns after you, a heart filled with love that overflows with love for our brothers and sisters and even our enemies. We receive a heart that's quick to obey you, to do whatever you call us to do. We receive as we, and we lay our lives down and we surrender ourselves completely to you and say, here I am, Lord, here I am. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, thank you so much for shedding your blood. Thank you that all we need is in your blood. Your life flows through your blood that as we take this cup of your blood, Jesus, it represents your blood as we take this. We're taking your blood into us, into our beings. Let your life flow through us and fill us right now with all that we need to accomplish our destinies and for that which is in heaven held up to be released now in this hour, ho, ha, ha, that your will will be done here on earth, ho, in our lives and through our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We just love you, Lord. I'm just going to release the glory now. Oh, and as I release the glory, I'm going to release healing into your bodies. The Lord spoke to me this week and he told me, he said, the same way that you release my glory. And when you say I release your glory, my glory falls on my children. He said, I want you to have faith that as you release healing, my healing is going to flow to my children. Amen. All right. So I want you to receive it. Okay, wherever you need healing. I don't care if you need healing for 10 things. God's big enough. All right, get them all. All right. Yes. Oh, ha, ha. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I release your glory and I release your healing power right now. Oh, oh, I release your glory. I release healing. Oh, ha, in the name of Jesus, I release your glory. I release healing. Oh, health. Oh, 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 come forth in the name of Jesus. I release your glory, Lord, and I release healing. Oh, ha. I release healing to muscles, to bones. I release healing to all organs in your body. I release healing to your nerves and your nervous system. Oh, I release health to you strength to you. Oh, I release healing. I release your glory, Lord. Oh, In the name of Jesus. Let's all stand now. We are going to worship.